Birthday, Anna. Thank you, Pin. Such a surprise, huh? We chose the nicest one, didn't we? We did. Writing in a diary is going to be a really strange experience for someone like me. Not only because I've never written anything before, but also because it seems to me that later on neither I nor anyone else will be interested in the chatterings of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. The thing is, nobody would believe that I'm alone in the world. I have loving parents and a 16-year-old sister, and there are about 30 people I can call friends. I have a throng of admirers who can't keep their adoring eyes off me. No, on the surface, I seem to have everything, except my one true friend. I hope I'll be able to confide everything to you and that you will be a great source of comfort and support. I'd love to. Till tomorrow, then. At least we can still do that. Jews are forbidden to go to the cinema, you see. Or to swim, or go ice skating, or use the parks, or sit on public benches, or use trams, or ride in cars. But we can still go out with a boy. You go. Why? I don't want to look too keen. Anyone in. But what is it? It's call up papers. Father. But they'll send him away to the labour camp. Excuse me. You dropped something. Thank you. You won't be going, of course. Where is she not going? Summons was for me. What? Why didn't you tell me? Who is that friend of yours? You think there's no one here? Why are they sending her? Because I'm 16. Why didn't you tell me? We thought you were too young. Too young? Annalise, sit down now. You must listen to me very carefully. We've been making arrangements to go into hiding for some hiding? time. <laughs> Where? We, we planned to leave in about 10 days' time, but we've had to change it. Is it in the country? I can't tell you yet, my darling. But we have to leave early tomorrow morning and we have to move fast. Hmm? Darling. Meat will take you separately. It'll be safer that way. Now, you must say nothing to anyone. Do you understand? Now, wear all the clothes you can and pack what you can carry in your school bag. You can't be seen to carry suitcases. Meep and Yan will collect the rest of our things later. He's gone. 
I'll take Muji. craziest things, but my brain was in a whirl. Anyway, memories mean more to me than dresses. Lisa. We looked as if we were going to spend the night in a fridge. I was wearing two vests, three pairs of pants, a dress, a skirt, and two pairs of stockings. Ready? I was suffocating even before we left the house. If here, your office. I thought we were going to the country. You must hurry up, it's late. The workers will be arriving. Thank you, dear Meep. So much has happened since yesterday. It's as if the whole world has suddenly turned upside down. When the door closes, the reality is that we'll have to stay here until the war's over. Well done, Margot. It's 8.30. Now, we have to stay very quiet until 12.30. What? Shh. What happens if we need to go to the lavatory? Father's warehouse is on the ground floor, you see, underneath his office. The warehouse men who work there don't know anything about us, so while they're down there during the working day, we'll have to keep quiet. Margot! No looking out of the windows, no walking around in shoes, no running the taps, no loud voices, no flushing of the lavatory. I don't know how I'm going to bear it. We can relax during the lunch hour when the men leave, and after 5.30 when they go home. The only people who know we're here are the office staff, and they're risking their lives to look after us. We're lucky. We're really very lucky. 
have happened to them if they get found out? Now, let's get these unpacked and uh, make some lunch. I don't think I'll ever feel at home in this house, but that doesn't mean I'll hate it. Father's brought some books and says we can have some games. I've even got my collection of film stars. Just like home. What are you going to put on your side, Margot? Don't know. I know it's difficult, Margot, my darling. But at least we haven't been separated. So many families I have. At least we've got each other. Cheer up, my love. Pim, can you smell smoke? Edith. Soul's pan, my love. Shh. That's all right. Sweetheart, will you go and finish your unpacking? Please. Please. Good girl. Darling, we are going to be all right. We're going to be all right. You stop this. Stop it. Come on, you must be strong for me. You must be strong. I don't know what I feel yet. It's like being on holiday in some strange boarding house. It's a bit damp and lopsided, but it's probably the most comfortable hiding place in all of Amsterdam. No, in all of Holland. Daddy's right. We're very lucky. The first thing we have to do is sew some curtains so no one can see us. Slowly. <coughs> Actually, you can hardly call them that since they're nothing but scraps of fabric. Most artistic, isn't it? <laughs> Perhaps we should sell it to an art gallery when the war's over. <coughs> we can't call a doctor, of course. For obvious reasons. Has she asked after me? No, I haven't seen her. But you live opposite her. Haven't you seen anyone from my school? Shh, dear. Did you get the medicine, me? Yeah, and he's collecting some more Russian books today. Where's he getting them from? Oh, don't ask. You have a very brave husband. I'm a very helpful greengrocer. I'll, um, collect your shopping list at 8.30 each morning and then try and come at lunch times. Please do. I can't thank you enough. your heads. I had to lower the wall there to make the bookcase fit. Nobody will believe there's anybody here. Now our secret annex is truly secret. We're making ourselves useful. Today's been fun. We've stoned three crates of plums for Mr. Kugler. He and Mr. Kleiman are running Father's office till the war's over. They make pectin for jam and mix up spices for sausages. 
I've bagged the crates for our bedroom. But we won't be alone for long. Today, the Van Dans are joining us. Mr. Van Dan works for my father. He's got a good nose for sniffing spices. It'll be much more fun to have other people around. I don't like the quiet. It makes me nervous. Out of puff. What a lovely hat. Oh, thank you, dear. You know, son, Peter. I've seen you at school. What's that? This is Mushi. But we agreed. No animals. It's not fair. Why should he be allowed a cat? I told you not to bring him. You didn't let me bring Mushi. He'll be very good. I'll look after him. The dear boy loves his pussycat, don't you, sweetheart? And besides, you'll thank us for it. This place must be crawling with mice. I don't expect Peter's company to amount to much, but I suppose I'll have to put up with him. Careful on the stairs, they're a little tricky. Watch these steps, too. Mother and father's room. And this is where Margot and I sleep. This is Greta Garbo. I love her movies, don't you? And that's Princess Elizabeth of England, and that's Margaret Rose. Are you interested in royal families at all? This is the bathroom. You have to be finished by 8.30 in the morning. There's cold water in the sink, but when the workers have gone home, we can use the lavatory in father's office downstairs. And we can listen to the wireless there too. for all of us, but your parents will sleep in it at night. Mr. Clymans made them a fold-out bed. This is your room. Isn't it cosy? Come on, come up here. And this is my favourite place of all. We can make more noise up here. And we're allowed to open the windows so we can breathe the fresh air. That's the Tower of the Westerkirk. Mother hates the belts, but I love them. They remind me of the outside. I come up here when people get on my nerves. Do your parents ever annoy you? Mind you, especially Mother. Can I hold him? He's a bit shy. He's such a cloche. He's just shy. Of all the boys around, we have to have him. I think he's rather sweet. Mm. Oh, you always think the best of everybody. He's not used to girls and he's frightened. We're all frightened. It's a very narrow escape. This last week has been terrible. Yesterday, they rounded up 700 Jews. Our friends, the Gosslers, you remember them. They disappeared last night. Please, let's talk about this later. People think you've gone to Switzerland. 
Your neighbour rang me, said you'd left in a hurry, so I went round and searched your place. That's when I found the, uh, the note you'd left. What note? It had an address in Zurich written on it. I told him to destroy it in case anyone found out. Next day, everybody was telling me you'd fled to Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see my cat? What cat? She'll be fine, dear. Mrs Schmidt will be looking after her. Is she all right? There is a war on, you know. We've got more important things on our minds than cats. So why did you bring yours, then? Edith, where's that bottle of cognac? Cognac? We kept it for your arrival. I was really looking forward to having the Van Dans join us. Now I'm not so sure. Welcome to the Annex, my friends. We're very grateful to you. On with Petronella. Oh, my dear. She'll be all right. At the weekend, we get the run of the whole building. Today, Mother sent me downstairs to do everyone's laundry. Anne. And then she started to give me another one of her lectures. Anna! I take the opposite view on everything. Every day I feel myself drifting further away from her. It's hard to believe that only a month ago it was my birthday and we were so happy. Her father says I should be nicer to her. But sometimes I want to slap her across the face. Up here that I can feel free. Soon there'll be conkers on the chestnut tree. Not being able to go outside upsets me more than I can say, and I'm terrified our hiding place will be discovered and we'll be shot. That, of course, is a fairly dismal prospect. Today it's Saturday, and the warehouse men aren't around, so we can get up late and have our baths. We can go anywhere in the house, but I like to use our toilet. Mr Van Dan takes his bath in Peter's room, while Mrs Van Dan has yet to take a bath. She's waiting to see which is the best place. Mother washes in the living room behind a screen, while Father takes his bath in the office downstairs. I wish they'd all hurry up. 
please stay up here for the next half an hour. Please stay up here for the next half an hour. I've got it, I've got it. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Ah, I've done the water. <sighs> Useless boy. Peter baths downstairs in the radio room, you see. And he's terrified that someone's going to walk in on him. His precautions are rather pathetic, aren't they? Oh. Mother! And Margot baths in the front office, where she makes me stand guard. You hurry up. You took long enough. Anne, they'll see you. We're allowed to peek through, Father said so. It's funny to see all those people. We used to throw water at them. We didn't. They used to jump up to see where it came from. Now they're looking up for bombs. And yet, life is carrying on. That's the strange thing. There's a family living in the barge. They've got the sweetest dog. Once I even saw a Jewish couple walking along the street. I felt I was gazing at one of the seven wonders of the world. It gave me such a funny feeling, as if I'd denounced them to the authorities. We've just come out of one of the most concentrated and fierce nights of fighting, a night in which we struck hard one particular front along the enemy's position and struck through. The infantry attacked to the tune of another shattering Excuse artillery me. bombardment and broke through. My dear friends, today we have news of our own. We all know the dreadful things that are happening outside. I wonder if you'd consider another person joining us. Who? Uh, Mr. Albert Dussel. Oh, I know him. He's that dentist. He's very respectable. He's at Meep's apartment now. Waiting for your decision. But why him? I mean, you wouldn't let my cousins come. Well, Mr. Dussel is a single man. We only have room for one. One more mouth to feed. So we could all eat a bit less. Speak for yourself. Oh, don't be such a greedy guts. He's not going to smoke all your precious cigarettes, is he? Well? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, dear friends. Mr. Dussel arrived at the office, and when Meat brought him upstairs and told him we were behind the bookcase, he was so astonished he nearly fainted. Thank goodness she didn't leave him in suspense any longer. What are you doing here? I, I, I thought you were in Switzerland. Please, sit. Smoke? Uh, no. no. Thank you. The Weissmans swore they saw you being taken away in a truck, and Mr. Niklaus said that you'd gone into hiding in the country. What's happened to Ilse? Who? Darling, let him get his breath. Ilse Wagner, she lives in your building. Uh, uh, the parents were taken away. I, I, I don't know what happened to the children. No. Herman Van Dan. You know my wife, Petronella? Of course. This is my son, Peter. Peter. <clears throat> Would you care for a cup of coffee, Mr. Dussel? It's a Zatz, I'm afraid, and we have to make it in a jug. I'm still waiting for my coffee machine. You can have some of our sugar. What's happening? Please tell us. 6,000 Jews have gone. They've even started to take them out of the lunatic asylums. There's talk of mass sterilization. Please, let's... Speak later. You never told us. I've got to go. Now, we have to keep quiet until lunchtime. I'm so very grateful.
Why does he have to sleep here? He has nowhere else to go. But why with me? They said it would be unsuitable for me to share a room with a grown man. Well, that didn't matter, I suppose. You don't mean that. I'm just a child. He did ask if you minded. What was I supposed to say? Anne, I'd rather be here with you. This is my bed? You've got the long one. We had to pop up my mattress with the chair. I, uh, I hope you'll find me a pleasant companion. Many of my patients are children. I get on very well with them. I'm not a child, actually. I'm 13. You can put your things in here. I'm not exactly delighted at having a stranger use my things, but you have to make sacrifices for a good cause. And I'm glad I can make this small one. Who's that? My fiancé, Lotte. But he's ancient. Can I have a look? What lovely blonde hair. I like the flick ups. She looks much younger than you. Yes. Yes. She'll be horrified when she finds I've gone. She has no idea where. You see, well, of course, nor did I. We've been gone for four months now. Don't know what my friends are thinking. Don't know if they're still there. But we keep cheerful. We have to stay cheerful. More potatoes, Mrs. Frank. Thank you. More potatoes, Mr. Dussel. for the secret annex, a unique facility for the accommodation of Jews and other displaced persons. Open all year round, no charge, low-fat diet, running water in the bathroom and various inside and outside walls. She hasn't finished yet. It is forbidden to listen to German news bulletins as only the language of civilised people may be used. Hear, hear. No leisure activities allowed outside the house until further notice. Though calisthenics are encouraged by management and singing is allowed after 6pm. The end. Yours, Anne. Good night, Mr. Tussle.
Mr. Dussel is a champion sportsman, don't you know? He's so old. He likes to keep himself trim, unlike some people I could mention. <laughs> you don't have to sleep with him. <laughs> and he snores. Morning, Mr. Dussel. Good morning, everybody. How's the rib, Mrs. Van Oh, very painful, Mr. Dussel. Oh, she's suddenly taking up exercises. To get rid of her fat bottom, I suppose. Just, just here, just there. <coughs> Mr. Dussel is a trained medic, Pooty. Yes, we're, uh, we're lucky to have another expert on the premises. That's why my friend Mr. Frank hired me. I think that you should see us through the winter. <laughs> oh, I wish you didn't have to sell spices. Why can't you have chosen something nice, like sweets? In wartime, Anne, spices are more essential than ever. To preserve meat and to flavor its substitutes. Uh, and, and so is pectin for making jam at home. She knows that, Mr. Dussel. It was only a joke. Wow. Mum Frank, the children's advocate. It must be hard for Father trying to run a business from up here. <laughs> Especially with his arthritis. Today there was an important meeting. We'll have the other contracts prepared for tomorrow. Oh. <sighs> the negotiations were long and boring. Mr. Kleiman and Mr. Kugler did their best for us, but it turned out to be more serious than we expected. The building's being sold. And the new owner's coming this afternoon. To look it over. Oh my God. Shh. All sounds of breathing stopped. <laughs> Eight hearts pounded. Footsteps on the stairs, then a rattling on the bookcase. He's so close. This moment is indescribable. Stay here, idiot. I said I'd left the key to the annex at home. They won't be taking over the lease until the spring. War may be over by then. You don't really believe that, do you? Edith. What's the matter? The greengrocer's gone. What? He's disappeared. No one knows what's happened to him. He's been arrested. We don't know that. He'll tell the police about us. Of course he won't. He doesn't know about you. He knows you get extra vegetables. He's a good man. I trust him completely. Aren't you going to stay? I've got to get home. Me. I'm not sure she gets it. Of course, Mr. Dussel. Please give her all my love. I always do. She asked me to give you this. There's a letter inside. Thank you. Mr. Dussel is slipping lower and lower in my estimation, and he's already below zero. Pim, you've got to say something. Anne, please. Shh. Why can he send out letters and I can't? He's putting us in danger. He's putting Meep in danger. If they catch her, she'll be tortured. What if his darling Lotta tells somebody? What if Meep gets followed back here? Look, uh, Mr. Dussel's fiancé has no idea where he is. She thinks he's hiding in the countryside. Oh, Anna, dear, as I, I disapprove just as much as you do. Do something, then. He's lonely, dear. <sighs> He's got nobody here who loves him. He's not the only one. But it's so hard sometimes, holding my tongue when I want to scream and shout. 
I don't know how long I can bear it without exploding. That measure of fire and steel, which they have so often meted out to others. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. <laughs> and forward. This war seems to be going on forever. your nose in a book, haven't you, young miss? Well, Mr. Dossel's using my desk. Eh? Otherwise, I'd be reading in my room. Young ladies shouldn't be stuffing their heads with nonsense. <laughs> Perhaps you should read a bit more, Mr. Van Damme, then you wouldn't talk so much rubbish. Anne! You said Mr. Dossel was only going to stay for a few weeks. Stop complaining. Stop complaining and help your mother. It's none of your business. Don't you talk to my husband like that. Oh! I don't know how you put up with it. If she were my daughter, I... Don't you get sarcastic with me. <laughs> oh, I don't know. These modern girls. Margot, stick up for me. Margot reads just as much as I do. Margot doesn't answer back. She was such a good baby. Slept all through the night. Oh, just like my Peter. Didn't you, pet? And he learned to use the potty at 18 months. Mother! Our Peter's a good boy. He might not be an intellectual like you, but he's gonna go places. The trouble is, you know far too much about things you're not supposed to. Later on, when you're older, you won't be able to enjoy anything anymore. That's not true. You'll say, oh, I read that in some book 20 years ago, so you better hurry if you want to catch yourself a husband or fall in love, since everything's bound to be a disappointment to you. You know all there is to know, in theory. But in practice, well, that's another story. Thank you, Mrs. Beaverbrook. Why did you call her Mrs. Beaverbrook? Because she's always agreed with Mr. Beaverbrook on the wireless. What does Mr. Beaverbrook say? Haven't you been listening, Dimwit? He says they're not bombing Germany hard enough. So I think she should be married to him. Oh, you do, do you, Miss Quack Quack? What did you say? Miss Quack Quack. Anne! <coughs> Where did you find it? Give it back! Anne Don't rip it! That's my school books. books! Give it! By Anne Frank, Claire Claire. Six. As punishment Give it back. for talking in class, quack, 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 said Mistress Chatterback. You stole my pencil. I've never seen your stupid pencil. Ow! Oh, what's the hurry? Having fun? Could anyone join in? Is my desk free now? Of course. Baruch ata Adonai. Eloheno melech haolam, metzivano mechadlik nea shel hamuk. And then Hanukkah arrived. That's a miracle. Lechana elishabea, tikom beis tifilasi, visham toda nishabea. Excuse me. Mushi. Come on. <sighs> he peed on the floor. Got his litter tray. Idiot. Quack, quack.
It's 20 to 6, Mr. Dussel. Would you be good enough to let me use the desk now? I'm not ready. It's my turn. I have important work to do, young lady. So do I. What? Scribbling in your diary. It's my room just as much as yours. You already have use of it for an hour and a half, five days a week, and during my nap. But you have it twice as much as me. And why is that? Hmm? Because I'm a professional, not a little girl. I'm not a little girl. Anne, could you help with the potatoes? Mother, please stick up for me. No more arguments, please. But, Mother, it's so unfair! Stop it, Anne! Why do you make everything into such a drama? I'm so sorry, Mr. Dussel. Whose side are you on? When you first came here, Mr. Dussel, when you first came here, we agreed that the room would be shared by the two of us. Logically, that would mean that I would have the morning and you would have the afternoon. I'm not asking for that much, just two more hours twice a week. And where would I do my work? Perhaps I should go back to my nice little surgery on the Hellengacht. Well, you could always work in the lavatory. You spend long enough in there. Sorry. What is it, dear? It's Mr. Dussel. Um, can we speak later? We, we only have half an hour. Mr. Kugler has to go. Oh, well, wait a moment. Um, will you excuse me, Mr. Kugler? What is it, darling? Please say something to Mr. Dussel. Mother won't help. She's being horrible as usual. I know it's a, a difficult situation. You need your privacy to study, and, and so does my daughter. Uh, Good old father. If, if I may say so, Mr. Frank. She's a very headstrong child. You see, if, if it were Margot, I wouldn't mind. Writing is very important to her. I believe it's the only way she can make some sense of the world, find solace in these terrible circumstances. Work and hope. That's what we tell our daughters, Mr. Dussel. That's why we believe so strongly in their education. The only freedom is in here. This is our hope for the future. Out of respect for you, I'll agree. Yes. And I don't want people to say that Anne failed her exams because of me. Thank you, Mr. Dussel. Oh, God, I love you more than anybody else in the world. Your mother. She doesn't love me like you do. Anna, that's not true. <sighs> Mr. Dussel sulked for two days. So childish of him, don't you think? Helpers. Outside, things are getting worse. Meet met my teacher in the street last week. There are only four of my classmates left. She didn't know which ones. Women come home from shopping to find their house sealed and their children gone. Children come home from school to find their parents disappeared.
my dear me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I hope and to add to our woes, Mr. Dussel has started work. Keep quiet, woman. I'll hear you in the street. Somebody come and help. Somebody, please. Now oh, open up again uh, and relax. Uh, uh, oh, I... Done. Next. Gracias por su ayuda hoy. That's not Hebrew. No, it's Spanish. Spanish? Yes, it means thank you for your help today. Is that what you're studying? So I've, uh, I've reached level three. You see, uh, when the war's over, Charlotte and I plan to emigrate to South America. You never told me. No. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Your wish. <coughs> it's my fourteenth birthday today, and I've been thoroughly spoiled. I've had a book on mythology, a pot of yogurt. A brooch made out of a penny. As youngest amongst us, but and no more. your life can be trying, for we have the chore of becoming your teachers. <laughs> you read and you study all the day, determined to keep the boredom away. The more difficult question, much harder to bear, is what on earth do I have to wear? <laughs> I've got no more knickers, my clothes are too tight, my vest is a loincloth, I'm really a sight. To put on my shoes, I must cut off. Here. I'm plagued with so many woes. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Anne, Anne, what goes 99 thump? I don't know what. A centipede with a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Sorry, I haven't got any wrapping paper. They're my nieces. She's outgrown them. Thank you, mate. Oh, look at her. Sweet 14 and never been kissed. It's 16, stupid. Well, it wasn't for me. Oh, I feel like I'm on stilts. But I'll practice and practice until I get used to them. What's happening to me is so wonderful. And I don't just mean the changes on the outside of my body, but the inside, too. Anna. Whenever I have my period, I've had it three times now, I feel that despite all the pain and mess, I'm carrying around a sweet secret. Sometimes, at night, I have a terrible urge to, to touch my body. I can't tell anyone, not even Margot.
so peculiar about sex, aren't they? And Marga won't tell me anything. She was back? Good. It was Jacqueline who told me that babies don't come out of their mother's tummies. Anna, darling? She said, where the ingredients go in, that's where the finished product comes out. <laughs> Once, I, I tried to feel her breasts, but she wouldn't let me. Anna, look how you've grown. That's three inches in this last year. We can't wear these skirts, Mother. It was very kind of Bep. They're hideous. They're not that bad. Like potato sack. She used up all her clothing coupons. Everything's wearing out. Mother's corset snapped. Things get broken and we can't replace them. And the Van Dan's money is running out. Give that back. You're not selling it. Give that back! Over my dead body! <laughs> Why can't the firm pay for us? It pays for the Franks! This business, you stupid cow! Give me that coat! What about his bicycle? No, Mother! What, what use is it to you here? I need it. Oh, yes, where exactly are you planning to go? When the war is over, it's then It's never I... gonna be over! We're gonna be shot like rats by the Nazis! We're gonna be blown to bits while we're locked up here like lepers! Shut up! Why didn't you get us out of here before it was too late? We, we could have gone to America! Shut up! <gasps> what are you grinning at? I'm not! Staring at us! Sniggering at us! I'm not! Why can't you stay in your own bloody room? She's just a fat, red-faced fishwife. Added to that, she's exceedingly pushy, egotistical, yes. cunning, calculating, manipulative, grasping, vain, and coquettish. Oh, if only I could dump her in a bucket of water and put her in the coal shed. Aren't parents awful? Don't you mind it when they're horrible to you? I probably deserve it. No, you don't. You should stand up to them. And they've always been like this. They're too nice. That's your problem. I hadn't realised that until recently. I'm sorry I teased you. It's all right. When I called you a dimwit, you're not. You just take your time. I think that underneath it, you're a really deep thinker. The trouble is, I babble away and then I could hit myself afterwards. Nobody really understands me, but then I don't really understand myself. I feel so lonely sometimes. You? Haven't you noticed? Most of these potatoes... My parents are just as bad. Treat me like a baby. Even father does, and I love him to bits. And he's always siding with Margot. Everybody loves Margot. Well, of course I do too. She's so beautiful, isn't she? Don't you think? I hadn't really thought about it. Is that true? Next time you go to get the potatoes, can I come too? Down to the warehouse? Won't you be scared? Not with you. I need a bra now. I don't think so. Can I have one of yours? I've only got two. You said they're quite too small. Yeah, but I haven't got anything else. Please. Okay. Really? Mm. 
You like Peter, don't you? Hmm. Of course. How much do you like him? More than you do, that's for sure. Well, she wouldn't snap at her hand. And he was not very bright. But he does have feelings. It feels so strange to be this close to the outside world. You're so brave coming down here. It's my job. And I have to bolt the doors each night and unbolt them again every morning. Sometimes, when it's quiet, I can hear the warehouse men laughing. Huh. They used to be my friends. Be sweet. Moshi. Moshi. He always follows me down. He loves you, that's why. Peter and I have been coming to the attic more and more lately. I think I'm falling in love with him, but I don't know if he feels the same way about me. He's so shy. I think they're playing just for us, don't you? Sometimes I feel like a bird whose wings have been ripped off. I want to dance and whistle. I want to look at the world and feel young and free and not worry whether or not I'm Jewish. I just want to have some fun. Everyone's always getting at me. If I, I talk, I'm showing off. If I don't talk, I'm rude. And if I'm tired, I'm lazy. Growing up's are always like that. We're going to be different, aren't we? I want to move to the East Indies and live on a rubber plantation. I'm going to be a dancer or a famous movie star. I can't decide which. It's all right. I've got a chaperone. Have you two got my cushion? I'm sorry, Mr. Dussel. It was the only one we could find. It'll be covered in fleas. The cat didn't sit on it. Can I have nothing to myself in this place? What a fuss pot. Let's give him a real surprise. What? Too laughing about Anne. I'm doing my best not to chase after him all the time and to talk to him as little as possible, but it's not easy.
What's happened? The front door was still bolted this morning. I had to break a window to get in. You stupid idiot. Now the air raid warden will think there's been a burglary and call the police. The police? Shh! You're getting very careless nowadays. One little job, and you can't even bloody do that! Poor Peter. It gets worse and worse. Mushi's disappeared. No one's seen him since yesterday. It's not your fault. I'm useless. I'm stupid. I'm no good at anything. That's not true. You're quite good at geography. And now I've lost my cat. You've got me. Have you ever kissed anybody? No. No one? Oh, well, only mother I, and... I mean, a girl. It's so crazy. I'm half mad with desire for him, and yet... I don't know. Is he the right one? I don't know. Off to the attic again. Oh, I'm just letting Peter the Foresight Saga. Getting a lot of reading done up there, are you? Haven't you noticed them? This is the BBC Home and Forces programme. Here is the news. Some of the best news of the war so far. John Snag will read it to you. The Italian armed forces have surrendered unconditionally and an armistice has been granted. Where's Anna and Peter? They should be hearing this. This news has been given by General Eisenhower in a broadcast from Algiers at half past five this afternoon. Here is the text of this paper. so I'm not Miss Quack Quack anymore. I'm sorry I teased you. <laughs> you thought I was a little pest, didn't you? I used to be the class clown, but I'm a different Anne now. I like it when you smile. Why? Because you've got dimples on your cheeks. <laughs> I was born with them. It's the only mark of beauty I possess. Well, that's not true. I know I'm not beautiful. I never have been and I never shall be. I think you're very pretty. You're my El Dorado. <laughs> that's a place, silly. You can't call a person that. Only joking.
Good night, my dear. Good night, Mother. Please be careful, my love. About what? Peter's a very sensitive child. And I'm not. I just mean he's rather young for his age. In many ways, rather younger than you. And he hasn't had your advantages. You know... You know you can be rather demanding. Demanding? W well, enthusiastic. I mean, you pick things up and then you suddenly get bored of them. Is that all you can say, Mother? Can't you be happy for me? Of course I am. I just don't want him to be hurt. You can be rather hurtful, you know. Seems like you care more about his feelings than you do about mine. That's not true. I want you to be happy more than anything in the world. Doesn't sound like it. I just don't want you to grow up too fast. Girls do nowadays, haven't you noticed? We're not going to be the same as you. We're going to live our own lives and travel and have careers and... And we're going to make a better job of it than you grown-ups did. Honestly, do you mind? Of course not. I mean, you're nearer his age. I've never thought of him like that. I just wish you'd told me. We used to tell each other everything. You could always come and join us up in the attic. What? You'd be very welcome. Don't be silly. My turn. I wish I could get away from our parents. Do you think they've got bases on the coast? Of course, some of them must be. I suppose sometimes they must put petrol in and think it's full. It's they getting cold up here. It's so boring. We've been shut up together so long that everyone knows what everyone else is going to say. It's the punchline of every joke, the end of every story. We're driving each other crazy. That is the stupidest comment I've ever heard of. But why aren't the British carrying out any bombing raids today? Because the weather's bad. Yes, but it was nice yesterday and they weren't flying then either. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Can't a person talk? Not in your case. Mr. Frank always answers his wife. She doesn't talk such rubbish. I'm only trying to make conversation. And when she does talk, it's usually something pleasant or useful. Me! Every day our helpers arrive, with the wind on their clothes and the fresh air on their cheeks, bringing us our freedom. Uh, come upstairs, we're all waiting for you. On Saturday, Meep's laden like a pack mule with our library books. Food comes in cycles. Just now, it's cabbage. Cabbage with sand, cabbage without sand, cabbage with mashed potatoes, cabbage and mashed potato casserole. But I don't mind. All I think about is when I can be alone again with Peter. I know. for the lower class when you get back to school, do you? No. What is our motto? Work and hope. Your mother and I are getting a little concerned about... She doesn't understand! Shh. 
Why can't you be nicer to her? You make her very unhappy, you know. Do you love this boy? Do you think it's wrong? No. No, but when you're living so close together as we do, you have to be careful. Outside, things are quite different. You can see other girls and boys, and you can take part in sports and other activities, but here, we're together every moment of the day. If you want to get away from someone, you can't. Things can get rather out of hand. Time for your French. I've been thinking a lot about marriage lately. Take my parents. Their relationship is supposed to be ideal. No cross words, perfect agreement. Father's not in love with Mother the way she's in love with him. He kisses her the way he kisses us. I'm not going to have a marriage like that. Dear Pim, if only you knew how unhappy and lonely I've been this last year and a half, with everybody criticising me for everything I do. Somebody's tried to assassinate Hitler. Come listen to the wireless. In a moment. Nobody. Not even you understands how I'm growing up. I need to be free. And now, after a long struggle, the battle's over. I don't need you or my mother anymore. I don't want to live by your example. I'm an independent person and I'll behave the way I want to. Nothing will keep me from going up to the attic. You'll either have to forbid it or trust me. I'm not your little girl anymore, so please leave me alone. Dinner's ready. What's the matter, dear? No, I'm just, uh, just reading about Pip's death. What again? <laughs> I've received many letters in my lifetime. But none as hurtful as this. You've had so much love from us. We've been always on your side, however impossible you've been. All this time, I've encouraged you to be a writer so that you can write me this. I can't help it. I have to write what I feel. Stay here. 
and keep quiet. Let me come too. Outside things have got worse. Everyone's hungry. A week's food ration doesn't last two days. Little children steal whatever they can lay their hands on. Shops are ransacked. The Dutch have turned into a nation of robbers. We didn't dare move upstairs. Every time we thought they'd gone, another sound made us shake with fear and hold our breath once more. I don't know how long we sat there, because the Westerkirk bells have stopped. I think they've been melted down for the war. I'm sorry. They didn't find anything worth stealing in the warehouse. So they forced the way into the offices. What did they take? Cash boxes, the blank checkbooks, two typewriters, and all the sugar coupons. Oh, I just feel so helpless up here. You must have left the light on again. We did not. You must be more careful. At least the police didn't come up here. Oh, I wish they would. What? Well, at least we'd be put out of our misery. I can't stand this much longer. <laughs> to tighten up security. During the week, father and the other men can't go downstairs anymore to work in the back office. We have to keep the windows shut, though it's stifling hot. I think you should take two of these today. What? Your valerian tablets. We just have to remember all the suffering in the world. No, for goodness sake. Don't snap at your mother. She's only trying to help. She's right. At least we're not in Poland. Do you know what's happening to the Jews in Poland? Mr. Dussel, please. Of course I know. I listen to the radio too. They're being poisoned by gas. What have we done wrong? Why does everyone hate us? Why is it that there's one law for Christians and another one for us? It's like if they do something wrong, then it's just what they do. But if you or I do something, it somehow reflects on all Jews. Isn't that crazy? Your hair looks nice today. You're not listening. History cannot be written on the basis of official decisions and documents alone. If our descendants are to understand fully what we as a nation have had to endure, 
then what we really need are ordinary documents, letters, and diaries. Not until we have succeeded in bringing together vast quantities of this simple everyday material will the picture of our struggle for freedom be painted in its full depth and glory. He's talking to you, my love. But who'd want to listen to my drivel? It's not drivel, dear. Have you been reading it? Of course not. Wish I could lock it up. Just heard what you've read out to us. In your short stories, we all love them. Wish I could write like that. You? But you're so clever. Anna, you could keep it in there. Thanks. I know I can write. I'm sure I can. After all, I'm my own harshest critic. I know what's good and what isn't. Unless you write yourself, you don't know how wonderful it is. When I write, all my sadness disappears. But, and it's a big but, will I ever be able to write something great? How long has this been going on? It's just a headache. Why didn't you tell me? Because I knew you'd make a fuss. Light in here is so bad. I think you need to have your eyes tested. How on earth is she going to do that? Have you heard the one about the elephant and the perspective? Yes. It's five past one. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is a special bulletin read by John Snay. D-Day has come. Early this morning, the Allies began the assault on the northwestern face of Hitler's European fortress. The first official news came just after half past nine. It started. The supreme headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Force, usually called Shape from its initials, issued communique received. number one. This said... Under the command of General Eisenhower, <laughs> Allied naval forces supported by the Air Force. Those awful Germans have oppressed us and threatened us for so long that the thought of friends and salvation means everything. Every day I feel myself maturing. I feel liberation drawing near. I feel the beauty of nature and the goodness of the people around me. Sorry. No. Come in. Anne. It's just... Peter's been looking rather woebegone lately. Oh. Peter. Don't you like him anymore? Of course I do. He's a sweet boy. But? Nearly on the last page. What? Have you got any more paper? Anne. I haven't got much time, don't you see? I have to do this. I don't want to be a movie star anymore, Margot. I want to be a writer. He doesn't understand me. He doesn't really understand me at all. I'm going to have a different life to most girls. I don't want to be like Mother or all those other women who have a family and then they're forgotten. I don't want to have lived in vain like most people. I want to go on living even after my death. I want to train as a midwife and go to Palestine. Never told me. Never asked. I get annoyed with our parents too, you know. You? But... But you're the good one. I have to be, don't I? What? I've no idea, have you? About what? It's not easy trying to keep the peace. Somebody's got to do it, and it has to be me. You force me to do it. Force you? I'm just your little sister. You... I can't... I can't describe it. You... You suck up the oxygen. I'm trying to live. This is all we have. <laughs> this annex. This life. I wish I could be like you. Five silver bombers going back now at terrific speed. After doing their little part of the job, 
dropping their load of bombs on some German gun position or fortification. They're certainly giving those gun positions everything possible. I wish I had hands like yours. They're the hands of a lady. Are they? Hmm. Cherbourg has fallen. The big Atlantic seaport at the tip of the Normandy Peninsula is completely in American hands. That we're here by October. We have Mr. Churchill's word for it. We'll have to look our best for him. Won't we, Mrs. Frank? But still, they haven't come. The waiting is killing us. Mr. Kugler managed to get hold of eight crates of strawberries at the produce auction. <laughs> All hands on deck. <laughs> We're making them into jam for the office, but a lot of them are going into our mouths. Before the Allies arrive, the Germans are going to flood the country. Well, that's what they're saying in the papers. Well, we shall just have to swim. We'll put on our bathing suits and swim underwater so they can't see that we're Jews. Oh, yes. I can just see the ladies doing that with the rats biting their legs. Pooty! <laughs> I'll be all right. I'll walk on stilts. Stilts? I used to be a champion stilt walker when I was young. Will you? I'll find a rowing boat and row us all to safety. Oh, will you? Mm. Deep down, the young are lonelier than the old. It's hard for us in this mad world. How can we hold on to our opinions when ideals are being shattered and destroyed? When everyone's come to doubt truth, justice and God? I see the world being transformed into a wilderness. I hear the approaching thunder. I feel the suffering of millions. And yet, I somehow feel that everything will change for the better. But, in spite of everything, people are good at heart. I couldn't warn you. I'm so sorry, Mr. Frank. Raise your hands. Hands up. Have you been hiding here? Two years. You have five minutes to pack a bag.
Thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank <laughs> you. 